Hey y'all, it's Young Honey, and we're doing an insurgency in Far Cry 6 today. I hope you enjoy. Real quick before we start, here's some mental health resources. Always keep your head right. Stay up. Let's get right into this. Peace out. In the criminal justice system, what do we do? It's Young Honey, it's my boy Jim. We better run through another insurgency. Investigate crime and the district attorney to prosecute the, the offenders. These are their stories. What do you know? I've been playing a ton of Fallout, and so the controls are a little weird to me. confident this video gonna be dropping mm, I want to say two or three days after the midterm elections in the United States and I'm so fucking excited I really am I'm not I'm not a liberal or a conservative like I'm, I'm a lot I'm in a weird direction on the political compass, but I believe, I believe that this election is actually going to show a lot about both parties. I think it's going to say how serious they are about winning in the future. I think it's going to say a lot about where the country is headed. And I think, I'll put you, I think that it's going to be a wake-up call for both parties to this You know? I think that, I think that Republicans really believe in a lot of the radicalism that they've been pushing, and I think that liberals really believe that there's, there, there's a safety cushion for them because of Roe v. Wade, and, and ideally there should be, but I personally am a very pro-choice person, like, no doubt, but, so like, I do believe that, that 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 safe space for Roe v. Wade and legislation should exist. But there's also a problem with that. There's there's the fact that they were too reliant on it. They were way too reliant on the fact that people care about women's rights in the United States. Because unfortunately, the fact of the matter is, ah, do they? You know, and that's really upsetting to me. And so I think that this is gonna help the wake of call to conservatives that they need a real their platform back in. And I also think that this is gonna be incredibly beneficial to Democrats in the sense that it's like you, you gotta get real about actually solving problems. My like my biggest issue with them is almost entirely with the fact that their plan for Roe v. Wade uh, being overturned was vote for us in November. It wasn't Oh man, we lost a lot of hostages inadvertently. This sort of this. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't. Here's how we get more people involved in the voting process. It's not. It's not. Let's let's codify Roe v. Wade. Like it's not like we have the executive. Let's codify Roe v. Wade. It's none of that. It was. Donate to us. And I, they loved me the wrong way. And I think, I genuinely believe that that loved a lot of progressive people. And a lot of people who may be on the right wing of things, but are more uh, socially liberal. I, I believe that that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And it did not send the message that they really needed to send. Of course, I'm saying this like, I'm saying this about a week before the election happens. It's a Monday night. I feel like it's important to put that out there. I, I'm willing to stand by that, yes. <laughs> you know? 
but for real, like this, this is a point where if, if you're a partisan person, if you base your identity off of your politics, this is a terrifying time for you. But if you're someone that's just interested in the political process, in what voters want, and in how the population reacts to certain agendas, this is such a cool time. <laughs> It's so interesting to an extent, like it's kind of hard to see big picture, especially with what's going on internationally, especially given the fact that there's so much bullshit thrown around by either side. And I'm going to touch on that later in the video, but it's it's one of the most exciting times to be an American boy. And so, I, I can't emphasize this enough. Like, we really live in a people understanding and being involved and this is arguably one of the most important times to do just that and it's an exciting time for it this is a good point to get engaged and understand what's going to be happening for the next 20 30 years and so i don't know i try not to be preachy about politics or anything i don't i, I don't like i'm trying not to share my own like views too much you feel me but at the same time, I want to emphasize that this is this is a big point. This is a big point. We're gonna see some real interesting things in the coming week. There's the cooler. And that's just how it is for society in general right now. I am also just a little bit sick. I'm doing my best not to ramble or like let horse voice take over. I do apologize for that, but like, <clears throat> I figured like while I had the energy, I was gonna record it. It's been coming and going like a motherfucker. Oh no. Okay. I'm gonna reset the recording. Reset it. But yeah, like I was saying, it, it's a very exciting time to get involved in the political process, start paying attention to it, being mindful of what the fuck is going on around you in terms of legislation, um, specifically because of the amount of bullshit that's been getting peddled by both parties. I, I can't emphasize that enough. So, while we make our way back over to uh, getting the PG 240X to Lola, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna explain my background for saying all these things. Oh, just because I, I haven't really posted any content like this before and I, I'd like to explain that. Oh, I do study political science. It's, I, God willing, I'm about six months away from my degree. Oh, I have an AA in public administration. I'm working on my BS in political science and I'm planning on going to law school. Like, content creation is very important to me. It's something I love more than anything, but it, it's not a guaranteed career and that's kind of where I choose to focus my career energies for the most part. And so these aren't things that I'm just kind of like pulling out of my ass. I'm saying this from like years of education 
and just generally years of trying to better understand politics. And all that keeps coming up is this is an exciting time. This is, this is scary for a lot of reasons because it's a time where we're going to witness a lot of change, a lot of radical change from both sides. And it'll be noticeable and we're going to be going through hardships with it. But at the same time, we're moving towards something so much better. Because one way or another, either the system collapses in on itself, or parties actually become effective. But aside from that, so like kind of with my background, I focus on emergency management and kind of like national defense type classes. Those have what kind of really, really, really drawn my attention over the course of my academic career. So guessing elections isn't really my strong suit. My strong suit is looking at policy and kind of like looking at humanitarian crises and trying to figure out what can be done about it. Um, and that's kind of where my views end up coming from, and that's why I, I, I prefer to leave my own views out of this for the most part. They're, they're very, very, very much influenced by kind of how I feel about things, you know? And so, <clears throat> and so a lot of what I actually pay attention to is not guessing elections. I am not trying to see who's going to win. Like, I, I do not care for that stuff. I, I think that that's all like kind of bullshit and it's around to keep people busy. Um, and again, I'll explain that in a second. But, for real, this is an opportunity to look at what's currently going on and get involved. And you don't need the same background that I do. I'm just kind of like explaining the background so that y'all understand that like I'm not talking out of my ass. It's not really my specialty, but it's also it's something I have had to pay attention to to a very large extent. And so <clears throat> I just wanted to share the thoughts throughout the video. And I will. But I started off at the University of Pittsburgh. Um, I spent two semesters there. I got a lot of good books with learning down there. I made some great connections for law, music, and you know, just some. I, I, I found out to be watching my experience, but it wasn't the right situation for me or my mental health. And I ended up dropping out and coming back into my own for a little while. Um, I had to get things out. I ended up going to community college down there for a little bit. And you know, I took my credits and I moved up to college to see what's going on. And now I'm going to go to um, So I have had a lot of exposure to different ideologies, a lot of different demographics, and a lot of different individuals. But one 
thing that I wish people would keep in mind is that you're, you're not voting for a person, you're voting for policy and you're voting for how you're going to be represented in the community. You're, you're choosing where, where you're going, what your future is. And if we are too scared to talk to each other about our options in that, we're not going to get anywhere. We're going to end up losing sight of ourselves like we have. And we're just going to get lumped into a bunch of bullshit talking points like, I don't know, about who the most annoying commentator is now. Like, is it Ben Shapiro? Is it, it Bill Maher who said something offensive? Like, that's not politics. That's not discourse. We could do it so much better. It's so easy. And it comes down to getting involved. I've just kind of found that in all my experience, a huge issue has been happening. We want everyone. Everyone wants the best possible for themselves and those around them. We have different ideas about how to achieve it. And the way that we're currently operating is not conducive to doing it. It's not conducive to opening up this course. And that's both part of the population's problem. But it's also the fault of the system. And the way that it is the fault of the system is in how our political system is structured to help benefit large donors. And to help benefit individuals who have an obscene amount of fucking money to do whatever they want. And that's, that's where it gets really dicey. Because when I'm, I'm far from the libertarian. So we don't have to find that we're arguably getting taxed without representation because large corporations are able to buy out different political individuals, different political actors who are operating in their own best interest. These are rational individuals making, making the right choice for themselves.
and why we need this to change, and why the election is so exciting, is psychic. So, one of the first things that I do want to go into, <clears throat> just because it, it's vital, is yes, individual people will donate to a politician. They will. They may donate a large amount of money for that individual, and that amount of money can go a very long way. $50 from your average Joe runs a long way for the campaign, yes. But it gives you very little say in the policy points and the salience of policy. So kind of it gives you very little negotiation strength in what you get about being represented. You're not getting you you donate to a candidate that you mainly align with at that in that price range. You're donating with the expectation that you're gonna help that candidate. But not so much that they're going to be your voice. fucking horrifying to me it also helps provide a level of representation to the american vote talking about special interest groups the special interest group would be the largest one and the most terrifying one is the aarp the aarp will ensure that the elderly can go vote are represented in you know <clears throat> In Congress and through legislation, they're considered when policy is being passed. They will bus individuals out to go <clears throat> to go vote, and they make an incredible amount of donations to politicians on both sides of the aisle because they recognize that one party will ultimately win out, and they want to best represent that group of people. Now, in the case of the AARP, like awesome. Like, yeah, we, we should help out old people. Like, fuck yeah, dude. But in an instance like, uh, frankly, I can't come up with an example off the top of my head right now. Let's call it, let's call it something like the NRA. In an instance where you have something like the NRA, when they are essentially going bankrupt but have a cult of personality behind them, these, these special interest groups are incredibly strong because of the representation that they provide to people. So they're able to raise an immense amount of money from the average Joe. Not just that. They're also raising an immense amount of money from those private individuals 
and from different corporations that want to show support and not end up on that special interest group shit list. So if you don't if if you don't want to have a bunch of old people angry at you, you end up donating to the AARP. You know, if, if, if you're if you're a company and you want to appeal to the elderly demographic, you simply support the AARP and you show that special interest group love. The AARP happens to be the largest and most powerful special interest group, so they have the most say. They are incredibly powerful. And they're kind of horrifying in the sense that their policy will usually prevail. And in a situation where we have a finite amount of resources to be allocated, the vast majority of our resources don't get allocated to younger generations. And I don't know how I feel about all that. You dig? But those are kind of the three major influences in all of this. And I say this because one of the things that comes with special interest groups are lobbyists. Now, lobbyists can be good or bad. I have family members who are lobbyists, and I actually very much respect the work that they did. Really. Like, I'm not going to really go into like the whole career sort of deal just because I, you know, I just don't know enough. I, I, I would be doing them a disservice. But everything that I looked at was agriculture, environmental policy based. There were, there, there were causes I support and the work that I read, I was very impressed with. This isn't to say all lobbyists are bad. However, lobbyists are the movers and shakers within Washington. These are the people who are able to go and make an issue salient. So let's say you're one of those companies that wants to go support the AARP. A lobbyist might approach you. Say, hey, we want you to do this. We want you to sponsor this event. We want you to sponsor this candidate. We want you to endorse, do whatever. That place will act with us. That, that lobbyist also becomes a mid ground point where money can be exchanged. Large amounts of money. I'm going to reset the recording. Reset it. So, that's. That's kind of where we stand. It's not a perfect system. People, people's interests aren't fully represented outside of very limited places. You feel me? And there's really no way around it unless you're able to build a level of financial clout behind everything. And that's just... It's almost unfair to ask people to do in the United States just simply because of how shitty we treat everyone. How shitty our services are, how shitty our like, mental health care is. You know? Like it becomes literally, it becomes incredibly difficult to go and support the population through the means that we do. And so, when I say that there are people who don't see eye to eye on policy but both dream of a better future, that divide is coming from lobbyists who believe in their own mechanism of approaching the situation. That's coming from a lobbyist who believes, okay, this kind of financial money will help make this problem go away. And these problems are, they're, they're, they're not solved by people that represent the, the actual demographics that need that help. So that's just one way of using Political money itself just isn't, it's not foolproof, it's not very organized, and we end up dealing with factors and variables that show that human interest is not entirely preserved. You know, that's where we stand here. We get things from it. We can benefit. Ain't no doubt. Largely, we get fucked. So, part of why I'm excited for both parties' reactions to the election is that if they don't realize that the American people will eventually realize that both parties are fucking them, they're going to lose power. That's what they care about. They're going to lose power, they're going to lose the support of special interest groups, and most importantly, they're going to lose the donations and money. If conservatives aren't able to, like, flip Democrat incompetence 
on itself and wins his seats and take over. Only Democrats can't take a moral, in my opinion, morally indefensible platform from the Republicans and turn it into enough of a big deal that you buy voters into voting for you. We are is, we're looking at two parties that are just not only completely politically incompetent, they don't know how to play the game. They don't know how to play the game that goes into creating good governance. A politician should not be enacting what they believe is the right answer. They should be enacting the right answer, and you get that through community response and through community attention. So when you're giving out money to large donors, when you're giving out incentives for policy, things like that, you have a very easy, corruptible system. And while I'm no proponent of communism, I will say one of the most frustrating things is the notion that capitalism is more infallible than communism was. That communism was way too corrupt because in reality, both systems are. Both systems are easily corruptible by a rational actor, someone doing something for themselves, for their best interest, not the best interest of the people around them. That's why politics is going to suck for a little while. That's why you're going to see a lot of policy you don't agree with. That's why you're going to see so much decisiveness. Divisiveness, not decisiveness. That's why you're going to see so much divisiveness. I do see so much anger between both parties. And as I said before, that's not conducive to furthering dialogue. So, in relation to all of that, I do want to say that a huge part of all of this is the fact that the relations are made to both parties. Like the will donate to both parties. The AARP will support both parties. The NRA has Democrats that they like and that they donate to. The, these party, these special interest groups are bipartisan, but not because of their political views, but out of pragmatism. And that's not entirely problematic on the surface. However, when you recognize that these individuals are not considering community solutions, they're, they're putting in their own solutions. They're putting in what they believe to be as the right, right way to go, instead of the right way to go. When you get people doing that, it gives the American or any country's population experience, in it, it gives that population the illusion of choice. You're not actually making a decision for a candidate. Like, the decisions have already been pre-made. And I don't mean that in, again, I don't mean this in conspiracy theory land. I don't mean that there is a new world order that comes together and you sort of deal. I don't believe in that bullshit. I literally just mean that in this system many times. People People look at conspiracy theories and they'll single out individuals to build a conspiracy around such as with Soros or the Murdochs. And you, you, you can't do that. You can't do that because the individuals who are being targeted are part of a much deeper group. There are so many more people involved because it's not an individual making those donations. These are entities. You're not dealing with you're not you're not dealing with fucking Costco. Or you're not dealing with like Elon Musk, you're dealing with fucking Costco, so to speak. You're dealing with, with with an entity that doesn't just have assets and has fluidity. For those reasons, money will continue to talk. And I it's something I feel should be pointed out. And if anyone's ever curious, one of the easiest ways to check is to go look at political donations every election cycle look at special interest group donations look at private entity donations you can check out individual donations i happen to find them a lot less relevant but you'll find that they made to both candidates and that candidate <coughs> candidates will change their platforms immediately following these donations and that's kind of 
close to the show, like, you know, you simply have an illusion of choice. So, not just that, not just that. I'm going to set the recording. Hi, it's Young Honey. You've been watching my video. There have been beats in the background of this video. I make all of those beats. If you enjoy those beats, please feel free to check out a beat playlist. And if you're an artist or you're a producer, please check out the free for profit beat playlist. I have all the stems there. So I think it's pretty cool. Anyway, I appreciate your time. I hope you're enjoying the video. I hope you enjoyed the commercial. I'll see y'all later. Thank you. You said it again. So beyond that, our system is not conducive to creating change. When, what I mean by that is my very first political science class, like I'm, ta I'm talking this was, this was a review of basic civics. Like, like this was just an advanced review of basic civics. <laughs> and it literally opened up with gridlock is good. The idea that gridlock, argument between parties preventing progress, is good. Because it means that the right decisions are being made, but this is untrue. Because not only is our system, you know, inherently conservative in the fact that it's hard to make progress because of gridlock, you're also dealing with two parties that have to go to work with each other. They, more than anything, Democrats and Republicans are co-workers. They are not enemies. They are not rivals. <laughs> They're not warriors ready to tear each other's throats out. They're old fucks who are co-workers and have very outdated ideas of how to maintain pleasantries to avoid conflict with one another. And I personally believe in conflict theory. I believe that you need to be aggressive. I believe that you need fast motion in change. I, I don't believe in fully accelerating the processes that lead to those changes. But I believe that things need to be done incredibly expediently. God damn it! But I, I believe that things need to be done incredibly quickly. You need to make sure that you make quick, decisive action and that people aren't left out by that action. And so, you're, you're kind of watching different parties employ self-sabotage techniques. Yeah. To kind of, to kind of both enhance the idea, but also say, like, oh yeah, you can't do this, you can't do that, we can't. We can't make this change because the party, like the Republicans, the Democrats, whoever will react this way. And frankly, it's a bullshit excuse. It's, it's frustrating because that just means that they're not willing to do their jobs. And it shows that as opposed to making things better for us, you know, the taxpayers, the motherfuckers gotta, gotta deal with it. the fallout of their legislative decisions. Instead of thinking about us, they think about their interpersonal relationships at work. They think about, who would I piss off with this? And they try to think about it in a proactive sense, like, oh yeah, like, oh shit, what if I want to pass something later? Like, uh, they'll, they'll follow in good faith if I just vote for this thing here. And like, like, people are trying to play a political game of, A, they don't understand, B, they don't understand, like, they don't understand how to actually play it. They don't understand the zero-sum stakes, though. And see, they believe that these actors will participate in good faith. My main issue with the Democrats is that they believe that they can get conservatives to act in good faith. And that's not a thing that conservatives do not act in good faith. It's not. Trying to get for an enemy. 
right. The issue is acquiescing to a force that recognizes that you can exploit a system and does exploit it while other people play by the rules. I'm not sure if y'all realize this, but if one team is finding loopholes while the other team is trying to play by pre-established rules, the team playing by the pre-established rules without modification loses every fucking time. So, in an inherently conservative system, a system that supports financial strength, supports holding back progress, there is no reason to expect change on the scale that people are demanding in this November. And I think that that's going to be one of the biggest wake-up calls. I think that understanding that is going to do some crazy fucking things to the population. self-sabotage in a few ways, right? And they can create gridlock for themselves in a few ways. For example, Democrats, after November, they cannot, do, even if they went out, they can't do anything about Roe v. Wade. Supreme Court positions are appointed for a lifetime. They're not overturning it. They're not, they're not extending the bench. They would have done so already. They would have by Roe v. Wade already, frankly. They would have done a lot of work on it. And so they're kind of using that to slow up progress, and they have that as the center of discourse for a lot of their campaigns, which I understand. It's a very important issue, but they're doing it in a service. And I, I think that they actually know that they're doing it in a service. That, that, that's probably a little bit off the conspiracy theory land. I don't have anything to like truly, truly, truly substantiate it. And like, they're deliberately doing this, but the alternative is these motherfuckers are incompetent. fucking people or they're so bad at their jobs that they're fucking us up. Okay, like they're stripping they're stripping rights away from people because they are so in it. And honestly I I'd really like to believe that they're intentionally doing it. I'd really like to believe that no one has such a good nature yet is that stupid and in opposition. You know so that's kinda how I feel about it. But that's not that's not very valid. You know, but on the flip side, on the flip side, you have conservatives who use Trump to push and restrain their demand. One of the absolute strengths of Trump, I'm not, I'm really not a fan of this, but I, I think the dudes, he's not a legislator, he's not a businessman. And he's not a success in anything he does. But one strong point that he has that a political value that he brings to the conservative party is the fact that they can use him to help further their agenda and also rock things down. He is radical enough that he can push that one through. While also being, I don't want to say diplomatic. Like, like, I 
said, like I said, both parties do ultimately go to work together every single day of their lives. You said it clear? this year. We have people with such intense beliefs. Like, not only do we not know how this shit's gonna go, but we're about to get a vote in my opinion, for how the population is gonna vote, and for how they're gonna react to years, literally years, get made. Democrats and Republicans are Donations and donors do 
largely control politics. There's, again, no two ways about that. And that's really, really, really fucking frustrating. Really much First of all, grassroots attempts have been wildly successful in recent years just because of the internet. If you're actually passionate about something, you can actually have it on the internet. You feel me? Like, that is something you can absolutely do. But, that comes with the support of such a large group of individuals. You need to build support groups. You need to find like-minded individuals. You need to create collectives of individuals who think similarly, but are willing to check themselves and be rational. Like, they avoid falling to group think and bias. Like, group think problems, bias. And issues such as that. You need to find a well-diversified group of people that are able to contribute intellectually and financially. out there who spend billions, not of their own money, of other individuals' money, you know, the groups that they're supporting, they spend billions to ensure that their legislation is passed. They have the connections, they have the money, and they have the critical know-how, and that puts the average American at a distinct disagreement. I'll get fucked. That issue can be rectified. 
by going out, advocating for people, for beliefs that you support, raising awareness about those groups that are actively working against what you support, and also really making sure that you take an effort to go and learn about other beliefs, because we're not as far divided as these parties would like you to believe. Peace out.